Blue Origin has finally decided to do something SpaceX has not done yet, and this might be a real game changer. Today we're going to talk about why it matters, and how it could shift the entire rivalry between the two companies. Before we dive deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future updates. Blue Origin is trying to do something in 2026 that could finally give them a real win against SpaceX. These two companies have been competing for years, but the results have never been close. SpaceX leads in almost every area. They launch more rockets, they move faster, and they hit more milestones. Blue Origin has dealt with slow development and long stretches where nothing major happened. But now, they finally have an opening. The 2026 mission with the Blue Moon Lander is their chance to pull ahead in at least one important area. Inside the company, there is real hope that this could be the moment they accomplish something before SpaceX. What they want most is to land on the moon before SpaceX does and put their name on a major achievement for the first time. The reason this matters is simple. NASA picked two companies for the Artemis Human Landing System program. SpaceX, with its modified Starship Lander, and Blue Origin with the Blue Moon Mark II Lander. Starship won the first contract for Artemis III, originally scheduled for 2025, but it has slipped to 2026 or later. Blue Origin won the second contract for Artemis V, originally 2029, but they have been quietly working to accelerate key elements of the lander so they can perform an uncrewed demonstration much earlier than expected. Their internal target is 2026, and that timeline is not random. It aligns perfectly with the growing uncertainty around SpaceX's Starship crewed moon landing. If Blue Origin can land their cargo version of Blue Moon on the lunar surface in 2026, even without astronauts, they will be able to claim something massive that they landed hardware on the moon before SpaceX did. To understand why this is such a big deal, you have to look at the history between the companies. SpaceX has now completed more than 350 orbital launches, while Blue Origin has completed zero. SpaceX has flown reusable boosters over 250 times. Blue Origin has flown its suborbital New Shepard rocket 22 times and suffered a failure in 2022, which grounded the rocket for more than a year. SpaceX has already sent crews to the International Space Station many times using the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Since 2020, they have completed more than 10 crewed missions for NASA and private customers. They are currently the only company with an active human-rated orbital spacecraft. Blue Origin is nowhere near that level yet. Their only operational vehicle is New Shepard, which takes paying tourists on suborbital flights that last about 10 minutes. The capsule reaches about 100 kilometers and then comes straight back down. It never reaches orbit and it does not perform any complex mission phases. On the reusability side, the difference is even bigger. SpaceX lands Falcon 9 boosters almost every week, and sometimes they land two in the same week. In 2024, they averaged more than one booster landing every four days. By now, SpaceX has completed more than 250 successful booster landings, which is more than every other rocket company on Earth combined. Some Falcon 9 boosters have flown 20, 21, and even 22 missions, which proves that SpaceX's reuse system is not a one-time experiment. It is a normal part of their launch routine. SpaceX also uses a detailed recovery network. They have three autonomous drone ships that act as landing pads at sea. These drone ships are named Just Read the Instructions, Of Course I Still Love You, and A Shortfall of Gravitas. Each one is equipped with GPS-guided thrusters that keep it stable in ocean conditions while the booster returns from space. When a Falcon 9 first stage separates, it flips around, performs a boost-back burn, a re-entry burn, and then a final landing burn using its Merlin engines. The booster lands upright on four titanium grid fins and four landing legs. After landing, a robotic octagrabber clamps the booster to the deck so ocean waves cannot knock it over. The drone ship then carries the booster back to port, where teams inspect it, refuel it, and get it ready for another mission. SpaceX has repeated this cycle hundreds of times. They have turned booster recovery into an industrial process. Some boosters return to flight after only 21 to 28 days. 
Blue Origin's landing history is much smaller. They have never landed anything that came from orbit. Their only successful recoveries involve the New Shepard booster, which reaches about Mach 3 compared to Falcon 9's Mach 25 orbital speeds. New Shepard also flies on a simple up-and-down trajectory with no orbital re-entry heating. It uses a single BE-3 engine for a slow, vertical-powered landing. Blue Origin has reused New Shepard boosters a few times, but only on suborbital flights, and only after long gaps of several months between missions. The only place where Blue Origin looks like it finally has some kind of advantage is with their lunar lander. Everything else in their launch business is behind SpaceX by a huge margin, but the lander is different. The lander is built around the BE-7 engine, which burns liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. This engine has already gone through more than 1,800 seconds of hot fire testing at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. That testing includes long burns that simulate a full lunar descent, restarts, throttle range verification, and vacuum chamber tests. The BE-7 produces about 10,000 pounds of thrust, which is small compared to orbital engines like SpaceX's Raptor, but it is optimized for precision landings and high efficiency. Liquid hydrogen gives the engine a very high specific impulse, which means more performance per kilogram of fuel, but hydrogen brings major engineering challenges that most rockets do not have to deal with. Liquid hydrogen has to stay colder than minus 253 degrees Celsius. It is the coldest propellant used in rocketry. Even a small amount of heat leaking into the tank can cause the fuel to boil off. During the trip from Earth to the Moon, the lander spends several days in deep space. It goes through long periods of direct sunlight and long periods of complete darkness. The tanks sit in a vacuum with no air to help regulate temperature. In these conditions, hydrogen naturally wants to warm up and evaporate. Every gram that boils off is lost performance and reduces how much cargo the lander can safely bring to the surface. This is why Blue Origin has been spending so much time on advanced cryogenic storage. They have been testing multiple insulation layers that reflect sunlight and reduce heat conduction. They have experimented with vapor-cooled shielding where some of the cold hydrogen gas is routed around the tank to absorb heat and keep the walls cooler. They have studied passive boil-off reduction techniques that rely on specialized materials instead of active refrigeration. They are also working on cryogenic fluid management methods such as tank settling, pressure control, and propellant conditioning so the BE-7 engine can draw stable, bubble-free hydrogen during descent. These systems are not glamorous, but they determine whether the lander actually performs as advertised. NASA pays close attention to this because long-duration hydrogen storage is something no one has perfected yet. Even the space shuttle had boil-off issues and that was just sitting on the launch pad. Storing hydrogen for days in deep space is much harder. If Blue Origin can show that Blue Moon can keep its hydrogen stable for the entire Earth-to-Moon transit, they become one of the few companies in the world with that capability. For future lunar bases, surface power stations, or deep space cargo missions, that kind of storage efficiency can be more valuable than raw engine power. SpaceX took a different route to avoid these problems. Starship uses liquid methane and liquid oxygen instead of hydrogen. Methane can be stored at about minus 160 degrees Celsius, which is almost 100 degrees warmer than hydrogen. This makes it much easier to insulate. Methane tanks boil off much more slowly, and the propellant is denser, so you can store more energy in a smaller tank. This is one of the main reasons SpaceX chose methane for the Raptor engine. The Blue Moon cargo lander is also intentionally simple. It does not need crew cabins or life support. It does not need pressurized sections or human-rated safety systems. It is just the propulsion stage, the landing system, the tanks, and a cargo platform. That reduces weight and accelerates development. It avoids the slow review cycles that every human spacecraft must go through. In short, the uncrewed lander is something Blue Origin can realistically finish sooner than a human-rated vehicle. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.